Hello, everyone. Glad to see you back here at Silver Tears Tarot. And of course, a warm welcome to anyone who is joining us for the first time. So if you can believe it, we're already at that halfway point through the month of December. We did um, a pick a pile reading at the beginning of the month, and that was the monthly outlook for soulmates. That's something I've not done before. Usually I just kind of do a quick single reading, you know, and when I meditate on the energy, it's like I said in yesterday's reading, I feel like this um, this refresh ought to be a pick a pile also. Um, and so we had, you know, some fairly intense energies at the beginning of the month that we need to follow up on now. There's been a little change, a little bit of shifting since then. So today we're going to look to see what's coming in the direction for you and your soulmate um, for the rest of the month of December. And, um, you know, of course, this energy, it doesn't just stop at the end of the calendar year. It also may bleed a little bit into January. As you know, it's a general reading, timeless for all signs, um, and it is timeless. So even though I'm pulling it at the middle of December, if you happen to cross it at a different time, honor that timing. And of course, since it's a pick a pile, these readings, even though um, like it's a pick a pile, so you can pick your own reading but even with that it's still not going to resonate with everybody so I would say though if one of them really does resonate with you please like and share and subscribe so you can stick with me so now it's um it's time to pick out your pile we have little animal charms today you can either choose pile one with the butterfly uh, pile two with the bee or pile three that has a little turtle and as I always say don't overthink it. Just breathe. Let yourself kind of be drawn toward one of the piles. And, you know, you can hit pause if you need to, but don't take too much time. Um, don't overthink it. Like I said, if you chose pile one, it'll be right up next. For pile two or three, you can get the linked timestamps down below. So pick your pile and let's get started. All right. So here we are starting with pile one. That's the one that has the butterfly. This one's one of my favorites. So I'm going to be reading for you with the Radiant Tarot, and then I'm going to clarify with the Revelations Tarot here in a moment. We're going to start out with the main idea. And so remember, this is the main idea for the second half of December. So it's that the, the rest of the reading will be wrapped around this. But it's kind of that energy just refreshing some of what we already saw at the beginning of the month. And we've got the Eight of Pentacles. So the Eight of Pentacles is about getting really good at something. But in this case, it is about emotional self-mastery. We've seen that in a few of the recent readings. Um, but in this case, it is emotional self-mastery and it is acquiring or it's the seeking of that self-mastery. So it's not just the concept of it or the self-mastery itself. It's the search for it and the quest to obtain that sort of uh, self-mastery. So that is what this reading is going to be about. Let's take a look at what the energetic backdrop is going to be. And so that's the overarching energy. You know, it's it's kind of, it's the weather in the background. It's it's that it's really that energy that's flowing in the background. It's what you're what did I say in the other reading? It's kind of what you're swimming in. So we've got a seven of cups, which is a little bit of confusion. Um, but we also have a nine of swords in reverse and a nine of swords in reverse is it's anxiety lifting anxiety going away. So there's a sense in this um in this energy that's coming toward the end of the month, I think you're going to lean into the experience of December. So it's being a little bit intense for you right now. There's a lot going on. Um, definitely seeing that, which isn't surprising. I mean, this is a time of year where there's often a lot going on. And it's just, you know, because things are added doesn't necessarily mean that the old things that you already had to deal with are going to go away. So it just kind of gets added turns into a little bit of confusion when you look to see what you should do next. Sometimes there are enough options that 
it becomes a little bit unclear as to what you want to do. But there's something about it. Like you, like I said, you lean into it, you get, um, you get okay with that. That's what the under lying energy is that energetic backdrop and that is actually that's a really graceful sort of energy because it is definitely a lot going on but it's finding that peace in the middle of the storm you know and here remember we've got that quest for self-mastery it'll be interesting to see how these two things connect so we're going to see here um, what sticks out for you guys about this time frame that sticks out the most for the two of you um, about this time frame and because remember this is the holidays there's ooh the death card okay so something changes and ends those of you who um, have already been around tarot for a while are aware but the death card is not typically um, somebody dying you know it's usually the death of something the death of a concept uh, something that you're not going to do anymore, but it ends up turning into like regenerates and transforms into this new energy here. And so that's, that's kind of what you what you have happening here at the end of the, at the end of the calendar year, you have a sense of something ending. So we know the year itself is ending, but there's more to it than that. There is, um, I feel like this this New Year's Eve may be very symbolic for you as far as out with the old and in with the new. That attitude, I feel like, is the thing that wants to stick out the most about this time frame. So that's actually really, um, that's interesting. It's promising. I will be interested to see what comes out to clarify that. So you've got something that's changing here. Um, death it usually represents transformation and change. So you've got something that's changing here, but we don't have all the details. So let's look to see what another important energy would be that's acting on you at this time. So this could be, um, like I say, it could be positive to you. It could be negative. It could be neutral from your standpoint, but it's going to be important. It's something that is impacting you pretty strongly. And we have the emperor in reverse. I don't think that card has ever come out before out of this deck. Um, so this is the emperor in reverse. We've been seeing it out of several other decks here. Um, and that's interesting. I have used this deck a lot in, in tons of personal readings. You should have seen it. When I first got this one, it was everywhere. And I don't think I've ever seen this card actually come out in a reading. We've been seeing the emperor in reverse in some other decks, in other readings. So it's not necessarily surprising to me that this would come out. It's almost got that um, king of wands in reverse edge to it, but same... Um, the same edge of like the king of cups there's a bit of an overlap there where this desire exists to be in control of one of one's emotions there's very much a desire here to be in control but it's not just control of the situation and the way that it looks to other people it's also wanting to be in control of um, their emotions but what ends up happening so you have this buck with just a whole you know rack of antlers and he's that's a it represents a lot of power it represents being at the head of the social structure and you know it's it's got a lot in it um that when you have it in the reverse plays out very differently it's like that's what slips away when there's this attempt made to have control like this and so there is a change that's happening, and I feel like it's you initiating that change. I also feel, though, like there is, um, and this may be something that's shared between you and your person, a desire to control the situation and to control the emotions around the situation. This is going to overlap a little bit with that desire to create some emotional self-mastery. Um, and it's coming at a time where things are confusing but it's also coming at a time where you're making the best of it i see that anxiety reducing and in the face of all these options and all of these questions that come up there is a certain sure feeling about the way you are coming forward and approaching it um, but there's also that sense of wanting to control and so be careful with that let's take a look though at the hidden energy so this is going to be what you can't see from you know what where you're standing it's not necessarily hidden completely from view 
but hidden from your current view. And we have the King of Cups. So you notice the colors are very similar to your graceful energy up here. But this is the King of Cups in reverse. And it's that same energy that I was saying was coming across a little bit in this Emperor card. So it's that desire to want to control how the emotion comes across. They can even handle feeling a little bit of emotion if they can still get away with not showing any of it. That's very important to this person. So it's something that um, you may not realize the extent of, because I get the sense you probably do know that there's a little bit of hiding the emotions or needing to remain in control of them. I've spoken with a lot of you, and a lot of you are understanding um, that there is a sense of control there. There's also, though, this cool understanding with a lot of people that isn't judging their person for being in this place and kind of realizes that this is a grasping at control because they don't know how else to handle the situation. Um, but we'll get a little bit more on that one here in a minute. Let's first look at what kind of energy you're moving towards. So you're in this graceful energy right now, a lot coming at you, but you're figuring out ways to kind of let it roll off. And a lot of it has to do with new perspectives that you already have. I think it's both of you working toward that emotional self-mastery, but I also feel like it might be both of you trying to impose some control. This change, though, I feel like that is driven primarily by you. But it's like I usually say, if, you, if you've if you got um, changes, well, I say it a lot, but there's there's as you're making changes, they can be impactful to your person's energy too. So the bond that you have um, allows you to impact one another's healing. So as you're learning something, you're kind of opening the door for your person to make some progress as well. And that's some of what we've got happening here. So let's look into that energy that you're moving toward. Again, coming from this graceful energy. Well, we've got the Knight of Wands in reverse. So the Knight of Wands in reverse is kind of a scared energy, to be perfectly honest. This is the energy of someone who isn't sure how to, they're skittish. They don't know exactly which direction to go. Um, that's one of the things that I get from this card. I'm looking forward to clarifying actually all across the board. So let's go ahead and get started on that. We've got the Revelations Tarot. And we'll start by clarifying this Eight of Pentacles. That's the self-mastery, the emotional self-mastery. But the thing that sticks out the most about this is that desire for it and the drive toward it. So we've got the Six of Cups that has come out here in the reverse. Um, in order to gain this emotional self-mastery, your person is, um, and you may be engaging a little bit in this too, but there's some degree of of coming to terms with, hey, I cannot um, think about this person as much as I have been. I've got to break some habits of thought here. That may be a little bit of what is happening with this symbolic adjustment um, at the end of the year. Has the feeling of a goal to it, the death card does. It has the feeling of a goal that you make that's saying, you know, this is a transformation I intend to make. And then going forward from there, that's there's a very refreshing, cathartic sort of sense around this death card. Not completely unusual for a death card, but it's not always there. So with this Eight of Pentacles, remember we said this is kind of what the reading is wrapped around, the main idea. So there is this drive and motivation to get to a place of self-mastery. It is just striving to learn and to be able to benefit from that learning. Um, and to do that, both of you are feeling like I've got to kind of get control of myself here. I can't spend a lot of time thinking about what has happened in the past. I need to move toward the future in love. The, the fact that the love is here, and this is an unconditional love. This isn't like the King of Cups who in the reverse. So the King of Cups in the upright is... Um, is more loving, but he still is limited, still has to have that emotional control over himself um, and maybe over the situation a little bit. But that's kind of more when it gets into that unbalanced state, like what you see here in that hidden energy. But with this Queen of Cups, that's very stable. It's very stable and um, just knows no bounds because there's no fear. 
if love is the opposite of fear, this is what you're growing your emotional self out of. And it's just a beautiful thing to witness here in this energy and this grace that goes alongside it. That's the next thing we're going to clarify. So seven of cups with the nine of swords in reverse. Oh, that was a single card. I got to take it. Let's see. We've got the three of wands. So when a, a single card falls out, and I thought that was more than one, um, but when the single card falls out, I typically do like to take it. And oh, there's that emperor in reverse again. So we've got the three of wands and the emperor in reverse. This one feels more like a warning. I mean, this also feels like a warning, but it, this is that really graceful energy that you're in. You're letting the emotion of anxiety sort of fall away, despite the fact that all of these things are coming. And it's because you're able to feel like you've got this. You're prepared emotionally. Um, you have what you need. You're, the Three of Wands is having set things in motion. And it's like the two ships have left the shore and now they are they just need to arrive. They don't necessarily need to run into each other. I'm just saying, you know, they need to... Um, they will arrive at their destinations. And so that's kind of, you've got things in motion and it's multiple things. It's not just one ship leaving the shore. You've got multiple things going on, which is what I see with this seven of cups, but you're okay with it. There is that sense of just reducing the anxiety. And this emperor card though, it's still about trying too hard to control the situation. It feels like for a little while, this works. So you may get lulled into kind of a false sense of security because you are um, you're exerting control on the situation. It's actually reducing your anxiety and it's working to um, this is just the way I have things set here, but it's working to cover up the anxiety that comes from having all these options coming at you. It's also made better by the fact that you're more prepared for this situation that is so many options. Um, but looking at looking at this energy overall, it is not, um, it's a little bit of a tense energy, I guess. If I were to sum it up, I would say it's graceful, but it's there's a lot of movement, a lot of motion in that energy. And it's, um, it's kind of tense. It's not something, it's like heavy traffic in a big city. You know, it's not inherently bad, but you got to pay attention to what you're doing. You know, it's just keep going and be careful. So looking at this death card, that's the one that feels pretty cathartic. And it's what sticks out the most about this time frame for you and your soulmate here in the uh, latter half of December. Okay, I thought we would get two there. So we've got the fool card in reverse. That's the sense of not jumping into something new. And then we've got the world because something else isn't over. Whew. Okay. So, all right. For a few of you, you're going to meet somebody new and you're not going to feel compelled to jump into the situation with abandon because this situation with that with your person isn't over. Not necessarily that you're like waiting for this person just that you will reevaluate or or you will evaluate things with this new person very differently as a result of the fact that you still have all of this emotion kind of open. Um, the wounds are still open to a certain regard with this person. You're going to take that into account. But you really, I see this transformation happening regardless. I think that's something that um, even under the circumstances, you're going to find... Um, this may be a temporary situation where you decide not to jump in with, with reckless abandon. However, I would also say that's not all bad. This may just be you're more discerning than you were previously. So whether you choose to start something off with this new person as you get a little bit farther into the new year, maybe we'll keep an eye on that. But the fact that you are still very much wrapped up in the emotion of what's happening here, um, it makes you, it gives you pause. It causes you to make slightly different decisions. Um, and so, you know, that's not necessarily going to be, I, I was saying that was for some of you. I wouldn't necessarily say everybody's going to meet somebody new and off you go. Um, but I feel like that's, that's a pretty strong feel in this energy. Um, either way, it's that concept where you don't jump into something is going to happen. 
there's going to be something where you evaluate things a little bit more carefully because this situation is still happening. Whether it's another person that causes this in you is, is a different story. But the fact that there is an ending and a transformation, it's like this situation stops you for a moment and gives you something to think about. And you do. That's something you stop and think about and decide how you how you actually expect this to play out, you know, um, it makes you stop and evaluate and this transformation ends up being more valuable. So let's see though, what's happening with this emperor card. So it's the emperor in reverse and it's that other important energy that's acting upon you at this time. So we've got the ace of pentacles in reverse and that emperor was the needing to control the the emotions of a situation the outcome the way the communication happens the way it looks um, and it's causing them like i was saying it's keeping them away from some of that power that you feel from the emperor card in the upright so one of the things it's also doing is keeping a door from opening the ace of pentacles in the upright is about a door that is opening it's very slow to open this is not a quick process but it is gradually occurring this um this emperor card in the reverse controlling sort of energy keeps that door it's like you're trying to pull a door open but you have your foot in front of it like it's just it can't it can't happen um and it's just you can't have it can't happen unless you're able to remove that foot that's what the control from the emperor is like then you have the king of swords so what's further complicating this situation is that your person in particular is having a hard time looking at the big picture because of the emotion that's associated with it the very thing that's causing this graceful energy in the background is also causing a little bit of discomfort because it's like it's showing a little bit of that additional information that may you know want to come out but your person is having a hard time looking at it look for this in yourself too because i don't feel that energy as strongly with you but i do feel like it could still be there so if you've got a tendency to try and hold on to control be aware that it could be holding you back from some important things but also be aware that the answer may be in stepping back and looking at the big picture a little bit more thoroughly and a little bit more fully. So now let's look at this King of Cups that we've got in reverse in the hidden energies. That's that inability to um, release control about the emotions. This is a person, this is um, a person who wants to seem so together, but they're not feeling it that six of swords in reverse says that the um the energy of the the difficult emotions is still still very much with them and so we know there's been some tumultuous behavior or emotion because this is what this emperor is working against and trying to control um but looking at this we've got like i said that six of wands so the six of wands in the upright is that having come into calmer waters where they can actually see the reflection reflection is possible in those calmer waters but this person has recently come from choppier waters they won't have been able to see their reflection the healing can't truly begin and the being transported to a better place um it can't really begin when it's in reverse which is what we've got here so this person's um, kind of got their eyes squeezed shut so they can't see going forward, but it's because they refuse to relinquish that control, release that control. If they open their eyes, the tears might fall out. They can't have that. But it's what's required to turn this card upside down and get them where they need to go. They've had their bubble burst about something, and that is um, pretty painful because it feels like it's about them. Um, it feels like it's about what they thought they were or the position that they thought they held, not necessarily with you, but just in general. Um, and something is there's a new realization for them that is is making them feel like they both are kind of glad they haven't shown their cards so far. Um, but it's also making them feel like they even more they want to be even more um, closed, closed off about how they feel. So that's a difficult kernel of emotion that has to kind of unfold there. And there are many layers to that. 
could take a little while, but let's see about this energy that you're moving into here because this is that inconsistent energy, but it would suggest because that inconsistent energy is coming from primarily your person. It would suggest that they are um, actually making some progress. So bear with me because it's this is the eyes you know, squeeze shut, I don't want to take a step, I don't want to move forward sort of energy. And it has them in this, like they aren't moving, they've, they're disillusioned, they're not getting into calmer waters. Um, they're having a hard time with things. But if they're getting to a place where they're starting to waver, it means that they've opened up a little bit. So let's take a look at this one. Knight of Wands in reverse, and that's that energy that you're moving toward. I have a bunch of them fall out face down. I don't talk about my rules as much anymore, but I figure people will figure it out. But if you're ever curious, I talk about them a lot in my earlier videos. Um, so there's the Judgment card in reverse. That is... Um, this is something not passing judgment. And in this case, it's your person looking at their situation and realizing that they can't unsee the instability of it and the fact that it doesn't make as much sense to them. This tendency to run away um, that they have emotionally doesn't make very much sense to them. There is this drive in them also to find this emotional self-mastery and be, to be driven by love. Right now, they're focusing mostly on getting the obsessive thoughts out of their mind and making sure they're not thinking in your direction and certainly not acting as if they are. Um, but there's, there's, that creates some conflict in them and they realize, Hey, I'm not in support of the way this has gone. I don't feel right about this. Um, and this really sort of pulls up the corner even more on this issue here that they're trying to solve, but they're not there yet. This hanged man in reverse tells us that the secrets have not all come out. So the hanged man in the upright is a card of having found a new perspective or having come to a new perspective after taking some time to reflect. But we can see here with the six of swords in the reverse, that reflection can't yet happen. And so unfortunately, neither can that new perspective. And so I was saying this could take a while I do get the sense that it could take a while, but I also get the sense that this is this is moving now. It's uh, very slow moving. Your person is coming into this energy gradually, and it'll look awkward when it happens. The Knight of Wands in the reverse can be arrogant, self-serving, can, you know, come and go and be a breadcrumbing sort of person. All sorts of difficult things can happen with that, but it's being driven by change that is absolutely happening. And you should be able to see the beginnings of that, at least in their energy, within the month of December. So if you're not in communication with them, that may be more difficult. You might only be able to see it through their energy, but um, it's definitely something that is changing as we're moving through. So as we're moving through this month, getting closer towards the end of the year, I feel like the end of the year is important um, with regard to kind of what is sticking out the most about this time frame. So um, I'm going to stop here and take us into um, the extended reading. In the extended reading, though, I think there are a couple things with, that we want to look at. Um, I wanted to find out because we can see hints of it throughout here, but I wanted to find out how your person feels about this, how they feel about you um, and how things kind of are how does it feel for them to be progressing? Because there's definite progression here. And I would also like to learn a little bit more about this progression, pull some cards on that for you just to understand what is a little bit farther down that road. Um, so that's what we'll do in the extended. I'd love to see you there. Um, the link will be down below underneath this video. You'll be able to see the, um, the links to all the extendeds. You just click on the right one and it'll get you right to my Vimeo page. And it'll take you from there. Um, and we'll look at, again, how this person is feeling about the situation and about you and what is um, what's happening here in this energy that they're moving into. Tell us a little bit more about that. So thanks again. If this resonated, please do hit subscribe, hit the like button. And I look forward to seeing you either in the extended reading or off in a video in the future. And here we are with pile two. So pile two has the little bee 
and this one's one of my favorites um you know it's very small so we're gonna um we're gonna use the intuitive night goddess tarot for the main reading and then i'm gonna clarify with the naked heart tarot um, afterwards so we'll start by looking at kind of that main that main message for the reading it's the main idea this is the thing that the reading is kind of built around so the main idea of the reading is the warrior of cups so the warrior of cups it's um it's just like the um the knight of cups in the traditional tarot and so this is an action oriented card but it is um a, a loving action so that is the energy that is kind of the main idea for this reading so we'll have to see what happens when we go to clarify um, but yes the warrior of cups to start us out here um, so let's look then at the energetic backdrop for this month um, okay wow and so the energetic backdrop is that of introspection um, and really, so this one is, it's introspection, but it's also finding some of that, um, that balance that comes along with introspection. And so it's like the outcome of having taken the time to meditate, having taken the time to think some things through, to allow um, things to progress to a place where you are ready to process a loving action. Um, you have done some thinking, you're coming to a more balanced place. So that's part of um, what's happening there in the essential, or I'm sorry, in the energy backdrop for, and it is kind of the essential uh, feel of it, but it's that backdrop. It's like, as I sometimes like to say, the energy that you're more or less swimming around in. So let's take a look here at what sticks out the most in this time frame. So this is, um, you know, it's, through the end of December, but it's also um, a little bit of that, you know, that first time into January. So we've got two cards that want to come out here, um, even though we had a few more of them spill out. Um, just taking those two, we've got the Ace of Wands in reverse and then the Awakening card in reverse. So the Ace of Wands is... It's a new beginning that's not being given the opportunity to get off the ground, more or less. Um, and then this awakening card is, it's this, there's going to be a, this is like the judgment card in the traditional tarot. And so there's going to be a time or a situation where the two of you have the opportunity to really think things through and determine um what you want for yourself, what you want um, from this situation, and ultimately what you will what you will come up with is that what's happened so far is not acceptable. That is you can tell for sure what it is that you don't want and what has really just turned you off about this. So this is significant though, because this also has that feeling of being able to see those red flags that maybe in the past were a little bit more difficult to see or easier to glaze over um, they're coming out here so these are things that are they're deal breakers they're things that totally turn you off in general about the situation and you are getting to a place where you're being able to process that a little bit more cleanly um, and this introspection piece is significant here because this is part of what's coming out in the introspection but you're coming to a place of balance because you've made a lot of progress in yourself. So it's still uh, just a very challenging emotional environment. Um, but there is something very, I feel like this has got a positive bent to it. You know, it's, um, it's an action of, it's an emotional action, but it feels like it's at least based in love, even if it has um, many faceted uh, impact. So let's take a look here at something else, you know, another important energy that is active, acting upon you at this time. So could be good or bad, um, It's but it's an important energy. It's acting upon you and it bears mentioning. It's part of what's happening with this main, helps us to flesh out um, this main idea and to understand what's what kind of energy is following you here as you're coming to your place of balance. So... What is another important energy 
acting upon you at this time. Okay, so you've got the reclamation card in reverse. This is like the devil card in the traditional tarot. And so what's so exciting about this one is that you, you really have something that has been trying to control you or that has been succeeding in controlling you, but that no longer is. So things are improving in some way here. Um, it may be pretty uncomfortable though. So sometimes when something falls away that controls us and, and really it could be thinking of a person who's quitting smoking or quitting drinking or something like that, you know, um, it's really an awesome thing to do, but it's not a very comfortable thing to do. Um, if you've ever been in a position to uh, have to stop something that you had as an addiction or have to uh, make an adjustment like that, you would know it's very difficult. And so there is a sense, um, I'm getting all of that here. It's like that walking away from something that feels like an addiction or obsessive thinking, um, but being successful about it. So that's, that's one of the important things that I'll say here is there's a high level of success in this feeling. And that has to do with, I feel like this passionate, um, loving action could be it could be you guys learning to love yourselves. And I know that sounds kind of hokey, but it's more of uh, actually. So I get the, also the sense that progress has been made in that direction for both of you. But now it's kind of putting your money where your mouth is. It's proving it to yourself, you know, in some way. Um, but it, it doesn't rule out also a loving action between the two of you. So that when I first saw this card come out, I was like, well, it feels like a loving action between the two of you, but perhaps um, we'll look a little bit more deeply into that when we go to clarify. So looking here in, um, I want to use this space for the hidden energies. This is a space that I often like to use for hidden energies. This is what you can't see from where you're currently standing. So not necessarily that it's a deeply hidden truth, just that you are unlikely to um, see it from there easily. So we've got the High Priestess, which is about secrets. Um, it's about secrets, but it's also about a connection to intuition and a, co a connection to um, your personal truth. Your um, This is like when you go into a meditation and you're able to have a good communication with your higher self. It's not something that happens for me on a super regular basis. I mean, my connection with my higher self is okay, but some days are just off the chain and way better than others. This has got that sort of feeling to it, but it's um, it's something that is a little bit elusive maybe for you guys right now. And this feels like it is a shared energy that it's difficult for both of you to make that connection um, more now than some other times, perhaps. However, it's something that you are encouraged to continue moving toward. So that's something to um, something to think about. So let's look at that energy that you are moving toward. And this is not necessarily how do things turn out for you, but where is the energy going for you currently? Um, and we've got the Queen of Wands, which has come out in reverse. So it's um, there's there's a quiet vulnerability in this energy, I guess I would say. So um, there, the vulnerability comes from the dropping of the masks, the dropping of um, fake things. It, it Everything becomes more real when the Queen of Wands is in reverse like this. However, there's also this feeling of energy slowing down because She's willing to um, really put a lot of energy into things. She's very passionate, but by the same token, she'll kind of do things at any cost. And so this is more about um, making sure when we see it in the reverse, it's that making sure that it's not at any cost, that it is um, it, it's for the right reasons, that there's there's a more honest sort of feeling to this. Um, a more well thought out one, which makes sense with this introspection being in that energetic backdrop for the month. So let's jump in here then and go ahead and clarify, starting with the Warrior of Cups. And um, like I said, we're using the Naked Heart Tarot. This is one of my favorites here lately to be using in personal readings. So if you've gotten one of those recently, you may have seen this one. <clears throat> but looking at the Warrior of Cups... 
And what's going to clarify that? So we have the Magician coming out in reverse. Pull that one out. Um, let's see what else wants to come out for that. And this is that main idea for the reading. It's that main idea for the reading, but it comes out as a loving behavior, a loving action, um, very much towards yourselves, but also possibly between the two of you. I think we have some that flipped over in here. And just taking that top card, we have the moon. Okay, so... There is still um, a level of mystery to this, a significant level of mystery to this, and that we see that with the moon, but also just in the general energy. Um, even though the next place that you guys are going is a place that maybe feels a little bit more vulnerable, maybe a little bit less dramatic and, and uh, you know, kind of this intense, there's still a lot of intense energy around it. There's just not necessarily this... Um, intense sort of anxiety in the energy I guess so that starts to fall away but maybe it hasn't quite yet and I get the sense here that this mystery is around protecting that there's also this feeling here of my hands are tied you know this um, the magician in the upright is a card of being able to do great things and being able to um feel very capable in manifesting your own reality, manifesting alongside the universe. You know, in the reverse here, that's a tougher thing to do. doesn't mean that this ability doesn't exist. It just is, it's more about um, just not feeling it, not feeling like you have that ability right now. So that's going to be interacting with the energy of the Warrior of Cups, it's also going to be covered up a little bit in this energy of mystery. So let's look now at the introspection card and see what, what that's about. Because that feels like um, there's just a lot of balance in that. It's like that you've gone through a time of introspection, gathered some new perspectives. There's a sense of better balance here an emotional balance. We have the Six of Pentacles doesn't feel unbalanced to me. Um, so over here, you were picking up some red flags or not necessarily picking them up, but rethinking things and being able to see the red flags more for what they are. Over here, um, I start to get a feel for the equal give and take of energy not be, and we know that about you guys, but the equal give and take of energy just not really being there such that... Um, you know, that's that's one of the red flag situations that you need to be able to identify in order to be happy going forward, whether it's with this soulmate or in any other type of relationship. Um, and so we also have the chariot that has come out in reverse. And the chariot um, is a card of really getting up and going. But we see that we're moving to a place of maybe a little bit less motion, a little bit more quiet. Um, it's kind of a milder energy, um, and I can feel it. It's like it wants to put me to sleep. It's a very mild energy. Um, but here, you know, it, it kind of goes hand in hand with that mild energy, but it has to be, um, you have to be careful not to allow it to lull you like to sleep. Um, there are still actions that you need to do here and definitely something you have to do something good for yourself. Um, there's, uh, there's something that has to be opened. I'm almost expecting like the Ace of Pentacles to come out. Um, but it's like something has to open, but it's very slow to happen. And it's supposed to be slow. That feels about right. It's about on target. Um, but I love this card of introspection because of how much balance it feels like it brings to the situation. So let's take a closer look at this. This was what sticks out the most during this time. Um, and this was... You kind of getting to a place where you're seeing those red flags for what they are. I guess that's that's how I want to say it. Because it's something that's, um, that turns you off in the relationship and makes you realize, hey, here's something I really don't want to experience. I really don't want to tolerate going forward. And with this balance that you are striking, see, here is where you're headed. Um... This is basically the same card as the Awakening card, only it's in the upright. This is um, what's going to bring you to a place of awakening, what's going to bring you to a place of passing judgment and 
getting you know i see i feel this balance with this six of pentacles which is that equal give and take i feel like that's the sort of thing you're now that you know what you're looking for you're just never going to settle for less and you're going to be able to accomplish this again whether it is with this person or with someone else in any other relationship could be relationships within the family could be any nature or shape of them we also have the sage card that comes out and so this is a card um that is, it's like the Hierophant um, in the traditional deck. Although what I'm feeling off of this card right now is really the, the element of the spiritual guidance. Um, and it's it's like you're receiving spiritual guidance. We see that there is some of this wanting to maybe come through down here um, with your connection to your higher self. We also see that it's a little bit tough maybe to establish that connection right now. And to that's just one of the things that it might be tough for you to realize it's not necessarily that this is a permanent situation. Just know um, that currently things seem a little bit challenging here, but I feel like that's going to blow away um, possibly as this new energy comes in. So we'll take a look at that a um, little bit closer here in a minute. We'll probably also look at this as we get into the extended. Um, let's take a look here at this other important energy, though, because this between the two of you, this is that energy of... Um, like I was saying, quitting smoking or quitting something difficult where it's, I get the sense that you're walking away from something that doesn't do, and it could just be walking away from um, the concept of, of waiting for this person, you know, um, waiting for them, not necessarily that you're walking away from loving them by any stretch, but walking away from feeling like you need to be thinking about them or you want to be thinking about them on a regular basis maybe you start to step back a little bit maybe not go away i've talked about it in previous readings where you know you open the door you leave the door open for them to walk through but then you don't watch for it you don't wait um you know by the door you just kind of leave it open so that you're not shutting off the possibility um you're just making it so that you don't spend a lot of your energy in waiting mode so we've got the seven of wands. Yeah, because um, this is that feeling of feeling not being on top of the world, not feeling protected and like you could do no wrong. Everything you touch, you feel does not necessarily turn to gold. But I also get the sense that it's a perception and not necessarily as true as what you're feeling. So I think you could um, you could be being a little bit hard on yourself with regard to this this feeling of lack of confidence, um, not being sure how to move forward. We also have um, this heart of wands, and this is again that queen of wands sort of energy that's that's coming from this card to tell us this is you moving toward your truth. And I get the sense your person is also moving toward their truth. It may look a little bit different for them. Um, but I get that you walking away from something that isn't serving you, following your truth, this thing is making you feel like you're you're less than. It's making you feel small. It's making you feel like you don't have control over yourself, um, lacking in that self-mastery. And that is a tough place to be. And so, it, but it takes a lot of strength to be able to walk away and handle um handle moving forward you know this is this is a difficult path forward it's a scary path forward and to be able to handle moving forward sometimes that takes a lot of strength um, especially to take off those masks and and move forward that way so let's take a look at this hidden energy in this high priestess um get a couple of cards on that and this was that that energy that's hidden from you but it's really, it's, it feels like it's temporary. It's like the clouds went in front of the sun, but it's a partly cloudy day, not a thoroughly cloudy day. It's going to come back out. So we've got the lover's card in reverse, something feeling very difficult where you're feeling like maybe you don't have a choice right now. And the advice is to sit and think about it because this same introspection that gets you guys to this more balanced place is what's going to get you... Um, that patience um, is going to kind of get you to a better place with regard to your higher self and this experience. This thing that feels like it's no, there's no choice, it, choices are going to emerge for you here. Um, and then the other thing is there's some healing that needs to be done. So I almost expect the star card to come out in reverse, you know, in this energy because it feels like um, 
it's that sense of having a delay, but it's a necessary delay because you need that time to heal and reconnect with your higher self. So let's take a look at this Queen of Wands. I think we're going to look at this a little bit in the extended reading as well. Just kind of what does this take for you guys to cross this bridge and get to a better place? Um, but first, we'll look at this Queen, this Queen of Wands. Get a couple of cards to clarify that one. And the Queen of Wands in reverse, she's quiet vulnerability. That is what's coming off of that card, which is very much the opposite of the feeling that comes off of it when it's in the upright but you've got that card a couple times in this reading so the first thing that comes out here is the six of cups it came out kind of sideways i want to put it this way but i also want to recognize the fact that um, it feels a little bit like it's upright as well it's got some of the qualities of both which you know that's maybe why it came out sideways we'll position it a little bit more sideways it's more um in the reverse than the upright but it's an attempt to regulate the thinking so that makes me think over here even more that this is about obsessive thinking and about getting into um you know why does this not work for me why does this um seem to drag me down and it really does feel like it kind of drags you down as you get real with yourself that's one of the things you'll notice and that those red flags were dragging you down things like the energy um not being equal between the two of you and so it's a matter of trying to walk away but doing so in a healthy and balanced way so you're not just saying i won't think about this anymore those of you who have tried that may have noticed it's generally very difficult to do it's it's hard to be successful with that um, even if you've got pretty good um, control over what you tend to think about but it's about establishing a balance between the nostalgia and some of the the pain you know um, and speaking of pain, so we've got the Ten of Swords. So the Ten of Swords in the upright is a card of a very difficult ending. It's painful. It's hard to, um, it's just hard to deal with. But this is, in the reverse, a very different feeling. It's that feeling of coming out of it, like the sun is coming out is what I picture. And here with this really balanced Six of Cups, um, and that's what it feels like. It's like you're trying to find a way to maybe think about it less, which is why I feel like it's more in the reverse, um, but to keep room open for that nostalgia and that love to flow. I also feel like to a certain degree, this is happening with your person, but they're maybe not as far along on the path as you are. So um, I think as we go into the extended, we're going to take a closer look at this. We're also going to take a look at the bond between the two of you and get a feel for a little bit more how they feel. I don't feel like how they truly feel came out in this um, in this reading very much. So I think we're going to take a look at that. There is certainly hints of it, um, but we'll also take a look at this energy that you're going to because it's like it's a, a deeper version of this introspection. Like you've, you've recently stepped into something or you are stepping into something that is very positive, but you're going to a place that's even calmer and more positive. And so it's definitely moving in the right direction, getting past um, this difficult time you're having, both of you are having, connecting with your higher selves. Um, so kind of looking at what happens in the month of December, though, you're going to start to register those red flags. And that's where it's important for you to be able to balance the way you're thinking about it, to leave that door open, but not stand next to it, that sort of thing. So um, if this one resonated for you, I would just say, you know, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit like, stick with me. Um, and, and then if you want, we'll go on over to uh, the extended reading. I'd love to see you there. If not, I'll see you in another reading. Okay. And so now it's time for us to jump into pile three. And so Pile three had this awesome little turtle. And so one of the things about this particular charm is that it opens up. He's got a place to keep his things under the shell. So just something for you to think about as we're launching into the reading. I'm going to read for you with the spirit song tarot, and then I'm going to clarify with the healing light tarot. So we'll go ahead and get started. And again, we're looking at that refresh for what's happening for the rest of the month of December. And with you and your soulmate, let's look at that main idea for the reading. So this is that idea that sticks out. Um, 
it's going to be what the reading is kind of wrapped around. So we've got the Ace of Shells, which is like the Ace of Cups. It's water energy. So this is, um, it's a very abundant new sort of energy. It, this is reminding me a little bit of springtime, but it is it's all about the flow of emotion. So water is about emotion in the tarot and the Ace of Shells, it's new beginnings. So it could be a new beginning in love. Um, and then since we're here talking about you and your soulmate, it's probably relevant to, to both of you, but we'll have to kind of see um, what happens when we go in there to clarify what's happening with this. But it sounds like a, an awakening, a new beginning there. Um, so let's take a look then at the energetic backdrop for the rest of this month. And so we've got the three of shells. It's in reverse. Um, but the Three of Shells is, so this is about, um, it's about the flow of emotion again. In the upright, there's a very happy feeling about it. It's people getting together and having a great time. Could be at a party, um, could be at a social gathering, that sort of thing. This is maybe not feeling as great about it. You know, um, it's having that sense of, I don't wish I was necessarily here. I kind of would like to... Um, be by myself. It's a little bit more of an introspective feeling, not necessarily that, you know, you don't like people or you don't like going to parties, but there's a sense that maybe um, one or both of you might rather be alone right now or as you're moving into this energy. That's just kind of what's in that backdrop. It doesn't necessarily mean that you will be, doesn't mean you have the, even the opportunity necessarily to be alone. And that's another thing that I've heard from a lot of you is um, I, I don't get a chance to be alone with myself very often or with my thoughts very often. Um, and so I could see that being something that drives you. I also, from your person's energy, can feel like that may be something that they need a little of as well. Um, so let's take a look then at what sticks out the most about the rest of this time frame here in December. And remember, this can go a little bit into the month of January. It's not necessarily confined, confined um, to the calendar year. But it's that what sticks out the most. And so we've got the King of Crystals coming out in reverse. The King of Crystals is Earth Energy. Crystals are Earth Energy in this deck. Um, and the so I've talked a lot about that Ten of Pentacles or that Ten of Earth household where um, there's just there's this abundance of happiness and resources. Everybody has what they need. The Queen and King of Crystals are the heads of that household. The King of Crystals, one of the things about him is that he kind of has his cake and eats it too. He's um, he's very positive, has a lot of resources, can be a businessman, lots of um, exciting things that, you know, can happen with him. But he also feels deserving of what he's earned and worked for. Here, though, that's the thing that's sticking out about this when it's in the reverse. It's that feeling like... Um, of not being deserving one or both of you and I think it's both of you are not feeling deserving of this ace of shells new happiness abundant springtime energy so this is something we might have to look at but we'll clarify it we'll see what happens there for now let's look at this is going to be another um another energy that is dramatically impacting your situation this is so it's it's a dramatic energy. It's dramatically impacted. It doesn't have to be a dramatic energy. It doesn't have to be good. Doesn't have to be bad. Um, but it is impacting you. It is something that generally um, comes from the outside. It's usually an external force, um, but it's impacting you. So the six of shells. Oh, there's this feeling of happiness, sentiment, um, nostalgia comes out with this card. This is a very thinking of the past sort of card, but it's generally in a nostalgic or a generally positive way um, and that's something that's impacting both of you so I get the sense that you know both of you are thinking about what happened in the past together um, a lot right now and as you're coming up to this time of year memories that you have had are really just kind of starting to spill back at them and maybe at you as well. So this may impact you guys from um, this Ace of Shells standpoint. So when I think about this, the first thing I wanted to say about this card, and I kept myself from saying it because I wanted to wait until I clarified, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you. 
Um, I feel like this, this is like a reunion between the two of you um, that starts in the energetic realm. So you may, as we're moving into the second half of December, really start to be feeling this movement um, in the energetic realm. So maybe let's take a look here at that hidden energy. This is typically what I like to do here. And again, that hidden energy isn't necessarily energy that's hidden from, you know, deeply from the world. It's it's going to be energy that you can't see from where you're standing. So some element of this relationship that you need to know. Um, we have the four of acorns. That's the fire energy. So it's like the four of wands and it's in reverse. Here we are with that energy of instability and that feeling of... Um, discomfort um so let's see what the card actually says it does say comfort it says comfort and community at the very bottom of it and i don't know um if it's able to focus on that or not but um it's this comfort and community card and here we see this lesson that just keeps coming up it has been coming up in if you go to my instagram or my facebook i do these um on days that i don't put out a reading i put out a card of the day and i usually just go grab an oracle card and give you the impressions that come off of it. And so recently, um, we had one that was about that same lesson that just keeps coming up. It was about finding comfort in discomfort, learning how to be comfortable in that situation. And so here we see kind of the source of some of that discomfort. Um, but I guess we need to learn a little bit more about it. And so to do that, I want to get in and clarify. But before we do, let's take a look at this energy that the two of you are moving toward. And so this is, you know, like I always say, if you've been watching this, you've heard this. Um, if It's not the energy that you're necessarily going to end up in. It's that new, it's that energy that you're moving toward. I like to look um, not so far off into the future with this question um, because it has a tendency to let you know where things are headed. Um, and that gives you a little bit more of an ability to figure out how you want to handle it and what you want to do with that. So we have the five of feathers. It's the first feathers energy to come out on the table. So now we have some air energy. Um, and this is a getting all up in your head sort of energy here. And this is something that's kind of coming to you guys. So think about this. You're moving from this three of shells energy that's in reverse. This, um, I kind of just want to be alone. I don't necessarily want to go... Um, be at a party all the time. I, you know, maybe feeling if you if you are an introspective person, it's a need for that introspection. Um, if you are an introverted person, it's a need for that time alone. If you're an extroverted person, this is how introverted people feel. Um, but this five of feathers is kind of moving toward that energy of anxiety or you know, as you get in there and you start to think about it, there are maybe some some pieces that pop up that are they are uncomfortable. They are difficult for you to necessarily um, figure out how to manage, you know, and there's a lot of this love that's kind of coming out and really you're you're like rejoining in the energetic realm. Um, even if you guys are still sitting across the room, not speaking to one another, or you've got somebody that's ghosted you that hasn't, um, that, that hasn't wanted to be present, you know, hasn't wanted to communicate. You'll notice when you go into your meditations, you may have a tougher time getting to your higher self because this person, um, their energy is kind of coming to you. So just something to think about. And um, it's a little bit of energy that's kind of bleeding over from the second pile too. So I feel like there's a lot in common there in case that's one that you want to go watch. Um, in case you're, so sometimes you feel drawn to multiple piles. I have some people that tell me they watch all three and a lot of times it'll catch them at different points on the timeline. And I know we've definitely had, um, readings that came out like that before where I looked at the multiple piles and I thought, well, this is the same story on different timelines. So be watching for that. You may um, also just be able to get some good messages out of that one. I'm not sure. But there is, there's an energy of um, overthinking, anxiety, kind of, um, it, it's a per it's not a permanent energy. It's very temporary. Um, but it's, it's this feeling of spinning your wheels. That's that's kind of what wants to come out of this one. So let's go ahead and go in and clarify. I've got the healing light tarot that I'm going to clarify with today. And we're going to start with this ace of shells. So clarifying this ace of shells. Oh, let's see what we've got here. We've got the death card. 
oh, something is changing. So this is, um, I'm, I've got the feeling that this is not just something that's changing that needs to change, that's going to lead to a transformation and something new. So that's true. But I also get this feeling, um, this is something that has been difficult to get it to change, um, a difficult change to embark upon. And now it feels like it's ready. It's time to go. That's pretty exciting. And that may be why you're feeling um, some of that energy in the energetic realm. Or if you are, I don't know. Um, I've definitely heard that from a couple of you here recently that you've noticed their energy coming out to you um, here in the last couple of days. So if that applies to you also, you are not alone. Um, there's a feeling of reaching out, jumping into something new, and this feeling still a very much um, registering the pain from the previous ending. And this previous ending may not be the ending between the two of you. It may be an ending that happened previously. It could be something that was a breakup for them. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a um, ending of a relationship. It can be ending of faith in a person. You know, it, it's for a couple of you, this is going to be something that your person and you are both recovering from things that happened very early on in your lives that have impacted you throughout. Um, and, you know, I've often said it's not always a situation where you were abused or neglected. Sometimes it's just that your tiny, you know, tiny self didn't understand what was happening. You Maybe your parents leave you. I've used the example that, you know, your parents leave you in a room for 15 minutes. You feel completely abandoned, but your older self would say, hey, they had to go do something for 15 minutes. You know, you, you understand, but the perspective of a, of a very tiny person may be pretty different from that. So this could be something that you're continuing to try and heal from a pattern of abandonment, a pattern of betrayal, um, or perceived betrayal. It's not always going to be somebody actually, like I said, not, not necessarily a situation of abuse or neglect could just be something that's very difficult. Um, that, evoked those types of emotions. But there's a desire to jump in now and do something new. Um, and there is not necessarily a desire to change, but that impetus to change is here. The time to change is here. So that's a pretty exciting new energy that's popping out here. It's going to involve flow of emotions. We know that there's a lot of sentimental, nostalgic sort of energy that's attached to it. Um, we also know that there's this sense of a lack of deserving. But let's take a look at this um, this energetic backdrop first, this three of shells that's in reverse. This um, What comes across to me as a desire to just kind of not deal with certain things and to want to be alone. Even for a very social person, this could be coming out. So we've got that um, ten of wands in reverse. It's a feeling of I've just had enough. It's like breakdown. Oh, I got a card that fell. And took forever to pick up. Sorry about that. So we've got the um, Ten of Wands in reverse. And we've also got the Knight of Cups in reverse. This Ten of Wands feels like burnout to me. So it feels like that's kind of the reason that there's this desire to be alone and just kind of regroup. Not necessarily that a ton of bad things have happened. It could just be a lot. Um, for a couple of you, the first half of December has brought an awful lot of work toward the holiday season, toward um, wrapping up the year at work, things like that. And it could just be very heavy on you. The combination of everything, um, plus the emotions that come around as a result of this relationship, and we definitely see those emotions coming around here, can be very difficult and can make you just say, I don't want to do any of it. I don't want to go out and do, this is like an emotional action. It could keep you from wanting to go out and do something um, that's, I, I get the sense of staying home from a party or that feeling of wanting to kind of just be alone, regroup, go to that four of swords kind of energy, that four of, it would be four of feathers in this deck, but that's a rest rejuvenation sort of healing kind of feeling. Um, let's take a look at this King of Crystals. I'm curious about this one. I've been waiting to clarify. So this is what sticks out the most in this time frame. It's that feeling of not being deserving or not being enough. We've got one card that has come out, the Page of Wands, which is a curious feeling. A Page of Wands is curious. Um, and well, we've got some stuff turned over in the deck, but we don't want it. I, I get the, sometimes that happens. I'll get the sense like it'll happen in the shuffle, the previous shuffle. And 
I'll find the cards and they'll just be, they don't have that glow. They're not supposed to come out. Um, I can kind of tell when several of them come out what's supposed to be there. So that's an interesting thing for some of you aspiring tarot readers. Um, there are different ways that you're going to be able to determine what cards really want to come out. And it may be very different from someone else's. Just like your interpretation of the cards could be very different. Some of you are out here learning tarot and you're saying, I just want to understand what's coming out in your cards. So the thing to remember is that my interpretation and what I feel off the cards may be different from what you're feeling and what you see when you bring the same cards out. Or, you know, if I bring those cards out in another reading, they may feel very different to me there too. So anyway, this, um, this King of Crystals is talking about kind of not having that, um, the internal courage, the internal fortitude, the, um, feeling of deserving of their position. And yet there's this extreme sense of curiosity. Like this is not a lost cause. Also, there's this sense of having set something into motion and just sort of waiting for it to, um, materialize or get here. It's like the ship has left the shore and it, you're waiting for it to arrive on the other side or your person is, I get this. This is a, a feeling that is between both of you, but it comes out more strongly in your person's energy. They have, um, they've done something to work on themselves. They've done something to make a change here. Um, but it's not necessarily, it's got to help get them over the hump for this King of Crystals, this feeling of not being deserving. The curiosity, though, that gives me the sense that they're going to be successful there. So next we'll look at the Six of Shells. Um, I'm getting an interesting set of ideas of what we might want to go into when we go to clarify. Um, I feel like we need to understand a little bit more about this this difficult energy here. Um, because there's so much beauty and wonderful in, in this energy over here. Um, but there's this thing that's sticking out about feeling like you're not deserving. There's this, like they're not deserving. There's this feeling here of wanting to be alone. Um, so how does that all fit in? I'm curious. Um, the other, the, so what's coming out for the six of shells though, we, we have, um, that feeling of nostalgia, but it's, it's blowing the dust up. So, you know, things had kind of settled. There's this feeling all over this side of the reading that the dust is becoming very unsettled. It's getting blown around. Um, that's kind of what I get from this Eight of Swords, or I'm sorry, this Eight of Wands energy. So we've got the Queen of Swords and the King of Cups that want to come out with this also. And so with the King of Cups in reverse, this is um, not an uncomfortable, or it's not a comfortable feeling. We know there's a this, this getting comfortable in the idea of discomfort and being able to get better with that, but yet it leads to this difficult energy of maybe spinning the those emotional wheels and, and just kind of feeling un unstable and unsure about things. But again, I get the sense that this is remarkably temporary. Here we've got, this is kind of what's stirring up some of that emotion and that King of Cups, that's the King that likes to have, um, he's willing to give love, but he likes to have a lot of control over how that comes across, how it looks, you know, um, how it looks is very important. There's an ego piece to this. Um, and the Queen of Swords in reverse, though, this is where we're starting to see a little bit of vulnerability because the Queen of Swords in the upright is very much a cut things out sort of energy. Um, but in the reverse, she's not necessarily cutting things out. It's still transformation. Um, so you see the butterflies on here. And she, the, so the Queen of Swords has a tendency to cut things out of, of life that are not necessary or no longer need to be part of the big picture. Um, and, and it creates a big transformation for you. Um, here in the reverse, the transformation has more to do with the vulnerability that's being allowed to occur here. Um, but it is, it's like it's, um, it's over layered by some of this other difficult emotion and energy that's coming through. And so this is part of like, we've got this core of vulnerability that wants to grow here. There's this new love that wants to go out transformation that is happening anyway. Um, and definitely a feeling of like the, 
the dust being blown up again. So things start to feel unsettled. Um, there's a lot that happens here that's kind of one of the reasons that I wanted to pull a card on what's an important energy acting upon you at this time is because we get a lot of information here about kind of what is and what's going on, but we don't necessarily see like the so, how does this impact things? And this helps us to see um, how it impacts things. So let's take a look at this four of acorns. And this was that hidden energy, um, hidden energy that you might not be able to see from where you're standing. Okay, yeah, there is something that wants to, um, that wants to control the situation um, could be, there's, okay, so I get like it could be an addiction. I get like it's probably um, a desire to, a reflexive desire almost to control. And this Emperor card tells me that, that, that whoever it is that is trying to exert control over the situation, um, you know better. Okay, so there is... This control could be another person, could be somebody in your family that's creating some of this. But for more of you, this is going to be obsessive thinking. It's going to be um, just difficult, difficult emotions that you have a hard time letting go of and walking away from. And it just creates a lot of emotional upheaval for you. I almost expect to see a tower card, you know, as in here. But there is also this sense of this emperor card gives me a lot of hope because this is that feeling of knowing that. Um, so in the reverse, this would be, hey, I'm going to try and control things. I'm going to try and take things into my own hands and make the best of it. And, you know, just my way or the highway. Here, though, there's a knowledge that that is not a very effective way to travel. Not a very good way to, um, to, to get through this situation. It's going to take a little bit more introspection. That's very difficult, uncomfortable, makes, um, makes the situation feel less stable. But this is what's going to have to happen to kind of get around this corner. And so I think in the extended, we'll take a closer look at this to understand, like, what is it going to take for the two of you to be able to build a bridge between the t between each other? Um, I also think I want to take a look at what this bond between the two of you is and, and a little bit more about how they're feeling. So we see some feelings coming out over here, but I want to dig a little deeper into that for you. But first, let's go ahead and clarify this five of feathers. So this is the energy that you're moving toward. And it's an emotional, um, internal anxiety sort of uh, sort of thing where it's just, this is a temporary energy that you get into that reminds me of this overwhelm a little bit here. And afterwards, you'll look at it and think this really wasn't that big of a deal. It's like you're trying to squeeze everybody in a room through a door that's, you know, normal door size and you can't get everybody through it at the same time. So the Ace of Pentacles gives us that sense of a door that um, is opening, but it's doing so very slowly. In this case, I would say the door is open. It's just, this is that overwhelm. So many things coming in all at the same time, but this door can only let so many things through at one time. So it'll all get there. It's just a matter of how it's going to feel on the way. But then we've got this Eight of Cups, and the Eight of Cups is about moving toward happiness. It's um, so it's walking, it's going toward the sun, and this um, you can see it's been a little bit hidden. It's been hard to figure out what direction to go, but there's movement now in this direction. It's going off searching for that ninth cup. Um, I like to say, but that is, um, that's kind of, I want to look deeper into this too, this energy that you're headed into, because, you know, there's that overwhelming end of the year sort of feeling that comes out for a lot of you. But this, I, the thing that where you end up searching or going towards the sun, going towards your happiness is very interesting. That is something that I would have thought might take more time, except we know that this is very temporary. So I'm curious to see how we move to that. And I think that's what we'll take a look at in the extended. So um, we will look at how your person is feeling about you with the, more about it. I mean, we see some amazing feeling coming out here, but we're going to dig deeper into it specifically. We'll look at this energy that you guys are moving into, and we'll also look at what it would take to get you past this energy and bridge into something that would be more of a, um, a success between the two of you. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and end this here. If you want to go into the extended, the link is down below. 
Um, if this one resonated with you, please hit the subscribe button, hit like. Um, that way we are able to stick together and I can keep reading for you. I would love to do that if you feel like you are um, part of this collective. So absolutely stick with me. Um, I'll see you in the extended or I'll see you in another reading.